la 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 Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing part? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in the cleansing part? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you washing the blood in the blood in the blood in the blood in the so cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garments spotless? One more time, we are 
Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We thank you once more. We magnify your name. We thank you for you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the King of glory, the ancient of days, the mighty and powerful God. There is none like you. We thank you for all you have done for us. We thank you for what you have been through for us. We thank you for enduring us, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and kindness. We thank you for your goodness and Lord. We thank you for your patience, Lord, for our transformation. Hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. We thank you for a morning and afternoon like this. We thank you for the preparation of your word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the access into your word today that will bring light to us and understanding. Glory be to your name in the highest, Father. Lord, we ask that you cleanse us, Lord. Purify us with your blood, that your presence, O Lord, may be here today. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord, Amen. let your presence deliver the sick. Let your presence set free those who are banned. Let your presence, O Lord, make the eyes, physical, spiritual eyes to open. Let your presence make the lame to walk. Let your presence make every evil deposit in anybody's body that I'm praying right now. And whatever is deposited in your head, in your shoulders, in your stomach, in your feet, I command by the power in the blood of Jesus, they will be lifted now. In the name of Jesus, Nazareth, Lord. Amen. Let every door to every soul be open. And let the Son of God come in today with His Word. Amen. And give us understanding of your Word, Father. Amen. And transform us through your Word today. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are still continuing the series that we started in January, the Church of God. But today, different title, different topic is starting. Amen. Amen. Different one is starting now. Today, you said to somebody beside you, the whole altar in the new church. Say that. The old altar in the new church. The whole altar in the new church. The old altar in the new church. Yeah, you have to remove the old altar from the new church. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, you are the church of. God. God. You are the church of God. And therefore, you cannot transport the old altar into the new church. You cannot transport the old altar into the new church. church. You are a church of God that has been delivered by the blood of Jesus. So this altar means a special table where ordinances of the church are performed. Altar is a place where ordinances of the church is Perform just like we have here. We don't have a, a standard altar here because we are having online service. Amen. Amen. So altar is a special table where the ordinances of the church are performed. In other words, altar control the service and the ordinances of a church. The service and ordinance of a church is controlled by you through the altar or from the altar. In other words, your life and attitude and character they are controlled by the altar of your life. So if you transport the altar from your whole ruin, when the house that the God has destroyed, and he has made you his church, then you transport the altar from your old ruins into the new church, then there's going to be a problem. That is what we are looking in today. You are the church, you understand by now what the church is. And now transporting the altar from the old ruin of the past life into the new church. The Lord wants us to deal with it today, to remove, to separate the old from the New to remove the old altar from the new church, amen. Amen. Out of Apostle chapter 8, verse 9 uh, uh, to 22. Out of Apostle uh, chapter 8, from verse 9, that's our Bible reading today. Out of Apostle chapter 8, from verse 9 to 22, it's a little bit long, but I want it to, uh, to be fast and I want everybody to listen to it clearly. Thank you. Acts 8, 9 to 22. Yes, but there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. 
Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, whom they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, then they laid hands on, on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. 21. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. That is our, where we are going to, the, the person that's going to be guiding our, the word of God today. So you see, we saw a man in the name of Simon there. The Bible says in verse 13, in that chapter 8, verse 13, it said, Then Simon himself believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing miracles and signs which were done. In other words, he also got baptized. He believed Jesus. He got baptized. Can you see the process? He got born again, isn't it? Yeah. That is how we can call it. He got born again, and he was baptized, and he also continued daily in the teachings. In other words, he started going to Bible study and the Sunday Sunday service. For a while, for a long time, we don't know for how long, until the journey, the trip of the apostle, the other apostle came to Samaria. That was when the secret was the secret of Simon was exposed. He believed for a certain number of time. He was baptized also. He went to church. He was in Bible studies. He was in Sunday school. He was in the Sunday service. He, and he did that for a long time. We don't know for how long. The Bible did not specify. But there comes a time when the disciples came, uh, Peter and the other apostles came to visit Samaria. And they had the opportunity to lay hands on them to receive the, the Holy Ghost. And that was when they knew that Simon has something in his heart that was different from what he confessed from the outside. That was when they knew that Simon transported the whole temp altar to the new church. Nobody knew that there was whole altar in Simon's church until he confronted the apostle that came to lay hands for them to receive the Holy, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You see, until the apostle came, Peter and John came, that was when they knew that Simon had hold altar in the new church. Simon had hold altar in the new church. We don't know for how long. It could be one year, it could be six months, it could be two years, it could be three years, it could be five years after. We don't know for how long. But what we, knew, what we know is Simon, it was discovered that Simon had hold altar in the new church. Don't forget he was former magician with charms. And if he, he left, he must have, before he could be going to church, he must have forsaken all the charms, isn't it? And throw them away. But that was a physical practice, physical exercise. Physical exercise was to throw away your charms. But the altar in the heart is seated. And the altar was discovered only when Paul, uh, Peter and John came to lay hands for them to receive the Holy Ghost. We will see, we'll go back to that soon. Look at what Peter t- told him in verse 21. He said, You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart, your heart, your heart, your heart is not right with God. Your heart is not right with God. Why? Because you have brought the old altar into the new church. You have brought the whole altar into the new church. And therefore your heart, your body is changed. Your confessional statement is correct. You have been coming to church all the time. You have been coming to Bible study and Sunday service. You have received Holy Ghost uh, water baptism. But you cannot receive the Holy Ghost baptism because uh, you have to, one spirit must give way for another spirit to come in. One spirit must do what? Give way for another spirit to, to come in. 
Now, salvation can be done in the body. It's a bodily exercise. But the most important thing is that it has to start from your heart. Because if it's not from your heart, you cannot receive the Holy Ghost. Because it's the Holy Ghost that exposes the situation of your heart. The Holy Ghost does what? Exposes it exposes the situation, the situation of your heart. heart. Because it's a spirit. And uh, until other spirit is out, the Holy Spirit cannot have a space in your heart. So if you have the altar from the previous life in your heart, that is the spirit from the previous attitude and character and behavior, the Holy Spirit finds it difficult to, to come in. And that was why the, the, the secret of Simon was exposed. The Holy Spirit exposed that this man, he can still be helped, but he has the whole altar in his new church. And that was why Peter said, it is not too late if you repent today. In other words, what he's telling me is that if you are ready to give up everything in your heart today, the Spirit of God will go into you. That is the only thing you need. You need to receive the Holy Ghost for your salvation to be sealed up for the day of for the day of repent, uh, uh, of glory and for you your name to be written in the book of life. Say to somebody again, hold altar in the new church. Hold altar in the new church. Let us see the memory verse. Memory verse in the book of Matthew chapter nine. Matthew nine fourteen to seventeen. The memory verse. Matthew nine fourteen to seventeen. Then the, then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will, be, they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Amen. Amen. You see, the disciples of the John the Baptist came to Jesus. So we, we see your disciples. We always fast. We always fast and pray. But we see your disciples always eating. Don't you fast? Don't you, don't you do all these things? And Jesus told them, say, see, that's no time. It's not yet time for them to do that. You cannot be using old, old kind of worship and ordinances to to begin to exhibit it in the what in the new life when they have not even known the new life. They were not yet exposed to the new life yet. As at that time, the disciples were just following Jesus. Most of them did not understand what we were doing. They were just following Jesus like babies. Then you want those people to be fasting and praying. And also to be paying tithe and offering when they don't even understand what they are doing. Everything that a man does religiously is just like humanitarian service. It's good to be to do humanitarian service. Unbelievers do that. Unbelievers give off. They help people. They buy clothes for the needy. They buy food for the needy. It's good. So if you are going to church and you are not yet repenting from your sin, you are simply doing what? You are offering humanitarian services. You are offering what? Humanitarian services. services. Amen. Amen. So, and Jesus told them further, you cannot, be, you cannot bring old altar into the new church. You see that? You cannot use old system to pass new life. He was not saying that they should not be fasting, but what he's saying is that that is the way he, uh, uh, Pharisees do. They are not changed, yet they fast. They are not repented, they pay tight. They are not changed, Yes, they clean their ushers in the church. They are not born again. Yes, they became pastors. They are not born again. Yes, they become what? They become workers of the church. We don't want to do that anymore. That is the old practice. We need to start the new practice, which means it, every service and the ordinances of the church must be handled by born again, spirit faith children of God. Every member of the body of Christ, the deacon, the deaconesses, Everybody must be truly and genuinely born again children of God. Filled with the Holy Spirit. You, have you don't put unbeliever in the position of trust of the church as a trustee. Because you, are just need, you just need people. We need several people to be trustee of the church. Then you bring Elijah and Elijah and some other people and put them together. And they say they are our church trustees. We must go away with the old to, be, to embrace what? The, the new. new. 
We cannot use the old garment to pass new clothes. Neither can we put old wine in the new wine skin. Otherwise, there will be chemical reaction that will cause a bust of the body. So let the hold go with the hold and let us embrace the new. Let what? The old let the hold go with the hold and let us embrace the new. the new. That was what Jesus was telling them. Don't forget that. We'll come back to that 21 and 22 again of the book of Acts chapter 8 as we continue. Now what the book again? That's a, a something I call golden verse here. The verse you must not forget. That is the book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 to 10. Colossians 3, 5 to 10. Colossians 3, 5 to 10. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. He says, therefore, put to death your what? Your members which your, are on the earth. Your members on earth. He's talking about your body. Crucify them. Because the salvation, our salvation that is genuine come with what? With sacrifice. Is a covenant with what? Sacrifice. With sacrifice. And therefore, you, you sacrifice every of your members. Not cutting them off physically. But assuming from your mind that everyone, everything about me is given unto Jesus. My feet can no longer go to night beer parlor or nightclub to dance. My hands can no longer touch immoral things or do immoral things. My eyes is, 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 is look at what Job said. Job said, it's not in my way. I just want you to see it. It's not in my note. It's not in my preach. Job 31 verse 1. Look at what Job said. Yes. Job 31 verse 1. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Job said, I have done what? Made a covenant with my eye. Why then should I look upon a young woman? Why then should I look upon a young woman? I made covenant with my eyes. That's the sacrifice, isn't it? He says, I have sacrificed that my eyes will not look at young ladies from the back or the front. It's a sacrifice. I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look at young women. It, it go beyond that. When Job said young women, it go beyond that. When you look at young women, women, you look at their uh, cosmetics and their jewelries and their laps and their everything. That's what he's saying. I made a covenant that I will stop doing that. I will no longer do that. So it's a sacrifice. The life in Christ is a sacrifice. Anyone that tells you that because you have a grace, you can live recklessly. The preacher is lying to you. Any preacher that preaches that once you have a grace, you 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 are at liberty. You don't struggle to do anything or to change yourself. He's a liar. Jesus said the same thing. The prophets of the old times, the apostles said the same thing, that there is need for transformation of life after salvation. Amen. Amen. You must, that is what we call born again. You cannot born again and just live rec- recklessly anymore or any longer. Can you read that again where you are reading for me, please? Colossians 3, 5 to 10. Yes. Therefore, uh-huh. put to death your members which are on earth, the earth. Who crucify your members in your body? Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Passion. Passion. Evil desire. Evil desire. And covetousness. Covetousness. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Because of these things. Because of these things. The wrath of God is coming upon the sons the, of disobedience. The anger of God is coming upon those who refuse to repent from them. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Because this is the way you used to live before in the past. And now you are not supposed to believe like living like that any longer. Yes. But now you yourselves are to put off all these. But now you, you are not supposed to behave like that anymore. Because they are the old man. They are the altar from the old ruins. You cannot bring them into the new church. Yes? Anger. Anger. Wrath. Wrath. Malice. Malice. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Filthy language. Filthy language. Out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Since you have crucified the old man with his deeds, activities. Yes. And have put on the new man. And you have put on the new man as a church. Who is renewed in knowledge. Who is renewed in knowledge. According to the image of him who created him. According to the image of Christ, uh, God who created Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is what he's telling you. You have crucified the old. Don't bring the altar from the old into the church, into the new church. Anything that is crucified must go on the cross. They must. You must not say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I need my altar. I need to. I need it in the new, in the new church." 
You cannot borrow any longer the old life from the old and bring to the new. Because you are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. But the life that you now live, you do what? You live in Christ, the Son of God, who loved and died for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we want to go quickly. We want to see the old altar. What are the old altars? How do you identify the old altars that want to destroy the new church? Say to somebody, sister, you need to listen to this. Sister, you need to listen to this. The old altars. The old altars. That want to destroy the new church. That want to destroy the new church. Listen to them. Listen to them. Number one. Now, before we go into the numbers of the of the old altars, there is something we must know. There are the old altars operate from your heart. That is why Apostle Peter told uh, Simon the sorcerer, Your heart is not what? It's not right with God. The old altar always travel from the heart. From the you bring them, you bring that altar from the old life, and they set you comfortably in your heart. They operate from your heart. The old altars do what? Operate from your heart. Let's see Matthew, the book of Matthew 12, 23 to 34. Matthew 12, 33 to 34. The old altars always settled in your heart. Matthew 12, 33 to 35. To 34, sorry. Either make the tree good and its fruits good. Yeah, you can go to 35, yes. 35, I mean, from 33 from to 35. 30, yes. Either make the tree good and its fruits good, mm-hmm. or else make the tree bad and its fruits bad. Mm-hmm. For a tree is known by its fruits. Uh-huh. Brood of vipers, uh-huh. how can you be evil? Mm-hmm. Speak good things. Mm-hmm. For out of the abundance Hold of Hold on. The- you see that? It said, when a f- tree is good, the fruit will be what? Good. Good. You cannot see a tree that brings a tree of orange bringing out what? Apple. Apple or grape. That are, we see, even though they are in the same family, grape and orange, they look different. You see a tree of grape juice, they, when you see their fruit, they are very big, bigger than the orange. And you know that this is a grape juice, a grape fruit. Then when you cut it, you know you are expecting it to be bitter. Even lemon, they are in the same environment as orange. Lemon, grape, and that's, lemon, we call it lime. Then we have grape, we have orange. Now, even though they are in the same group, when you see the trees, when you see their trees, you know that this is a tree and this is what. And when you see orange, you are not expecting orange to be, to be sour or bitter like lime or grape. You see that? By looking, you can, you can, your, your mouth is telling you how this one will be. By just looking. When you see a mango tree and you see mangoes on them, you know how they will taste. Because you have seen them, you know the tree. Now, that is what he says. He said, make a tree good. And a fruit will be what? Good. good. If a tree is good, the fruit that comes from it will be what? Good. They'll be good. In other words, we are the tree. And the character that comes from you is what? Is the fruit. That is why the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit are, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, the character from the Holy Spirit through you will be what? Will be all those things. Love, kindness, so on and so forth. Goodness. Self control, joy, and the rest of them. You see. So, but when you have the fruit of the flesh, also what you are expecting? Punching, beating, fighting, cursing, yelling. Right. And fornication, adultery. Those are the fruit of the world, of the flesh. So that is why Jesus is saying, it was Jesus speaking here. It, that's why it is written, in, if you have a red letter edition of any Bible, it says, when you make a tree good, it's fruit of the world, good. There is no doubt about it. He says, and uh, or else make a tree bad, and its fruit is what? Bad. Right. For a tree is known by its fruit. In other words, be, don't just tell me that you are Christian, you are born again, but let me see that through the way you behave. You understand that? Don't just tell me that you are Christian or born again. Let your character and attitude tell me who you are. If I see you and I stay with you for a few hours, I can t- ask you a question Are you born again? You behave like a Christian. But if you introduce yourself to me first, I'm born again, Holy Ghost feel, then I begin to see different things. Then we have a problem. 34. For out of the abundance of the hearts, the mouth speaks. He said, brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see that? 
Out of the born, so Jesus was not disappointed by their character. The Pharisee, the Sadducees, the scribe, he was not disappointed because that is who they are, that is what they stood for. So they can never be. Romans chapter 8, verse 8 told us that the man of the flesh can know what they can't please God, they do not have what it takes to be, and they can never please Him. You see, so because and now we have some also. Coming to be born again like Simon, but bringing the altar from the old ruins, ruins from the old temple, they bring it to the new church. Then that temple is now standing and trying to occupy bit by bit to begin to manifest at intervals. It begins to show up at intervals whenever it has a occasion. So, but from the uh, from the abundance of our heart, uh, of the for the abundance of what what is in our heart, our mouth will speak. Your uh, so when when Simon was speaking, Peter was not confused, and I believe Peter must have had this news of a Simon from from uh, uh, Philip. You see, he must have had the news because when you have a big fish born again, like the biggest abalis in the city, God born again. You know, any visitor that come to visit, oh, this used to be a biggest abalis, uh, abalis here, but he's now born again. He's with us. So, Peter was not confused when he said, I need to buy this, I need that. Why will he buy it? Buy it Because the man has a mind, he could go back to his business. And that came, you know that's a word you, you speak. You, don't, you least expect, why will I speak like this? How many people that have happened to you before? You speak something out of your mouth, from your heart, then you come to your consciousness and you say, why did I speak like this? Because the world is disgracing you. The world is making you look like a foolish, like an unbeliever. That is the altar that transported itself from the old ruins to your new church. It has been sitting down in your heart waiting for occasion to disgrace you. They sit comfortably in the heart waiting for occasion to... to the Bible says sin. Wait for, uh, Apostle Paul says sin. Uh, wait for occasion to do what? In, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 7. Took occasion. Sin took occasion. Then I die. You see that? When sin took occasion, it permitted death to come to the flesh. But that is not where I'm going today. But I, I'm just saying them in regard to what is happening to Simon the sorcerer. You see? He, the, that, that passion to acquire power, because he was a powerful man, isn't it? Yeah. He was a powerful man performing magic. The the attitude of acquiring power from the demon, from the, the queen of the coast, from the marine. You know, some of them went to the trees to get power, some to the marine, some to the everywhere. So when he saw that one, he said, I need this to add to my, my collection. And said, Paul or Peter, how much is it? I don't even know where that came from. How on earth, after attending Bible studies and Sunday school and the Sunday service, how on earth will he believe that they have to sell a power from Jesus. The Bible told us previously, in the previous, uh, I mean, the verses before then, that he saw, he witnessed miracles, isn't it? He witnessed miracles by evil Philips. And now, when Peter and John came, he was asking to buy power for Holy Ghost. That is what I don't understand. But the one thing I know is, it was the altar that he transported into the new church that stood up one day. But glory be to God, the day that he stood up, that was the day that Peter recognized that and said, See, you have repented before and you have been baptized before. You need to repent again today. That you can be delivered from the spirit that will not permit the Holy Spirit to dwell in your body. Because those altar, those things that are called altar, dwelling in the new church, they walk with spirit with any Christian. They are not something to go out by your self-will. They are something that God needs to help you with in serious prayers. That Lord, I have discovered, don't see, whenever you see strange statements coming out of you when you are hungry, don't overlook it. They are the altars manifesting to disgrace and to send to hell. And they are hiding in your new church. In other words, in your heart. Whenever you see you make any mistake you didn't mean when you are angry, Quickly write it down or memorize it. This is not from me. This has to go. 
I need to pray, you need to go. I never thought I could still behave like this. I never thought I still had this kind of feeling. So this is an altar that has come to set you in my new church and they must do what? They must go. I must uproot them from the roots. Amen. Amen. So let's go into the altar one by one. We have established now that the art of the abundance of what is in your heart, your mouth speaketh. And that is why Proverbs chapter 4, 23 says, You must guide your heart with what? All oh, diligence. diligence. Now, number one, altar in your heart. Number one, altar in your heart is the altar of adultery. Say that. The altar of adultery. The altar of adultery or fornication. They hide in the heart. They come through the altar of the whole ruins. If you have been adulterous before, or you have fornicated before, before you got born again, there is possibility that the altar will transfer itself, or you invite it into the, your new church. Let us see that confirmed in the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says about that. Matthew chapter 5, 27 and 28. Matthew 5, 27 and 28. So whenever you are seeing this happening to you, you know that this is an altar from the old ruins that want to ruin my present life. Believe me, if you don't take care of them very well, they will take care of you one day. Let's see this first before I get to taking care of you at the end. Yes? Matthew 5, 27 to 28. Yes? You have heard that it was said to those of old, uh -huh. you shall not commit adultery. It was said to the people of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has has at that moment already committed adultery. Anyone that look at a woman will ever look at a woman lustfully to lust after her has committed what? Adultery. With her in his heart. With her in the heart. You see that? He said, in the, uh, it is told to you that thou shalt not commit adultery. But it's not only that. But adultery actually starts from the inside. Before it manifests on the outside. So you entertain it. You continue to entertain. You continue to entertain. You continue to entertain. You continue to entertain in your heart. Until it brings you to shame one day. Until your, what you are cons the conception of your heart will begin to explode. And you give back to adultery. May you not give back to adultery in Jesus' name. Amen. May you not give back to fornication in Jesus' name. Amen. Because they, those things are conceived in the heart. The book of James said that. That God does not test anybody with, with sin. But after your sin is fully con conceived, then you begin to see yourself carry it out. You see? So adultery, before you become an adulterous person, you are already conceived. Conceived. How do you conceive? You are looking at women... Somebody else's wife, somebody else's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a, a lady, just like uh, Job says, I have vowed with my eyes to see what, that I will not look at a young lady. You have not vowed. You are still entertaining. You know, sometimes you are, you are going, that you see by mistake, by error, that you still zoom to look properly. You zoom and zoom and zoom. And to your zooming, because what? Your zooming now begins to manipulate and begin to disturb your mind. And when you get to a place of your bed in the night, you begin to think about those things that you have seen in the day. So, we have a highs. It is, usual, it is normal that you see. But anything that is not good that you see by mistake, you don't give a second or third or fourth look to, what are you doing for the next of the looks? You see, somebody is naked for the first time by mistake, like David. Everybody has gone to war. He is relaxing upstairs. You see? Then he saw a young woman bathing. That was a mistake, isn't it? He didn't mean to go and look at the young woman bathing. He just looked because he's, he's living in a kind of place that is high and he had to see people that are down and they, maybe the kind of bathroom they have then will just build something around and if somebody can see because there are the soldiers living around the palace and the wife, the wife one of the wives of the, of, the, of the soldiers. So she was bathing and David saw it by mistake. But David paid second, second what? Second look, third look, fourth look. Then I said, ah. He now called somebody said, this woman, go and call her for me. Because she, he paid too much attention to, the, to something he saw by error. Then he was lustful. He conceived adultery in his heart. And the conception was so much that he gave back to what? Adultery. The same thing we have one of the children of, of, uh, of David. He lost it after his sister. He conceived the lust. 
his own sister. He conceived it. He conceived it. He conceived it. Until the what? He gave back to it. So what this passage is telling you is that every sin that is conceived in your heart constantly, continuously, is a halter from the old ring and their intention is to destroy your, your current church. And they need to be destroyed. That is why the Bible teaches us that the salvation is from inside. It's not from the outside. But it affects your inside to transform your outside. If your inside is not done with, you'll be a whitewash uh, paint like Apostle Paul called uh, some of the, 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 the Jewish ruler, The Jewish rulers. They are whitewashed. They are talking about the things of the gospel, but they have not changed and transformed on the inside. Salvation must start from your inside, dealing with every altar that may set you in your new church. Then you see yourself genuine. In our Bible study in Sunday school today, I had some people saying that once you are genuinely born again, you can face every, every opposition. Amen. Amen. That's the way it is. When someone that is truly dealt with the altar in the, in the heart, they are able to face every situation. They will not be carried away. In living and in death, they have given and sold up to Jesus. Amen. 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 Those are the people that you call the radical for Jesus. They can lay down their heart for the sake of the gospel and the Lord Jesus. Because they are sold off from the altar. They have removed every altar of their heart. So if you are someone under my voice today, you see, you look at the opposite sex. Which you may be a married person. You have your husband. You have your wife. You still lost after somebody opposite sex. Then you have a altar. Of adultery or of altar, and if you are a young lady, you look at men, young boys or men, or you are a young man, you look at young girls and, and women, and you're lost in your heart. You need you have altar in your heart that need to be removed. Tell somebody that altar need to go. That altar need to go. That altar in the new church need to go. That altar in the new church needs to go before it exposes you and put you to shame. Before it exposes you and put you to shame. That altar put Simon to shame. Someone that was believed to be born again, coping very well, and growing steadily. All of a sudden, the author sprang up, and he put him to shame. And he brought him back to the stage of unbeliever. This happened in many people, regardless of your position in the church. Authors can hide in the body until you become a pastor, you become a bishop, you become an evangelist, you become whatever position you can be. You can become general of yourself with authors, this kind of author in your spirit. But one day, because you have left it for so long, he has conceived many things for so long, then it just, it blow up one day, and you say, the general of has committed a sin. Or, our pastor has uh, committed adultery or fornication. That is because the altar was kept for long without the, the owner of the church dealing with it. Every altar you transport into the new church, with its intention is to destroy the new church and bring it back to the old ruins. That is number one. Number two, pride, altar of pride, is also in the heart. In the book of Obadiah, chapter one, verse three. The book of Obadiah, it has only one chapter. Just read verse three. Obadiah. The pride of your heart has deceived you. The pride of your heart has done what? Deceived you. Has deceived you. You who dwell in the clefts of the rock. Yes. Whose habitation is high. Uh -huh. You who say in your heart. Uh -huh. Who will bring me down to the ground. You see. You say altar of your heart. You will say from your heart. Who will. I am here. Who will bring me down. I have achieved. I am not your mate. I am older. I am greater. Do you know those things. You think about them in your heart. How many people have happened to you before. Somebody spoke to you. The way you don't like it. You are conceiving. You are saying. How old is he. In your heart. How can they talk to me like that? In your heart. And when you see, when you monitor those things very well, you keep it, you keep it, you keep it. One day, what do you see? You blow and say, how old are you? What you have said in your heart many times, you now say it out. What you have con conceived in your heart many times, you say it out. I watched a, a Christian uh, 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 movie, I think yesterday or two days ago, and uh, it was yesterday. A lady that was counseling, a born again Christian that also studied uh, um, psychology, counseling in the movie. Then he, was, he, had, he, read, he had a doctorate degree in that. He was counseling, he was a married counsel, she was a married counselor. Then one of the people she was counseling said a statement that she said to her husband. He called her a name. 
I, I can't remember the real the or complete phrase. Something sliding, something bastard. So, as she said it, and the lady counselor said, ah, how can you say that to your husband? Do you know that stay in her mind? The day, there was one day her husband too misbehaved. That's a you slide this, slide bastard. Then, she, later on, she now went to see her and said, what I saw, what I heard from a client. Look at the way I blow it to my husband. Because she has always been, you know, having that coming and coming and coming to her heart. You see, then she also borrowed from that to do what? To shoot somebody. Can you see that? So that is the way these authors get, get in. They get in through men. I will tell you how they get in by the time I want to round up this, this message. If I have time to round up today. Because it's something I don't want to rush. I, I don't have intention to rush. If it's taking two Sundays, let it be. So, they are the pride is from the heart. You conceive it, you conceive it, you conceive it, then it blows and it causes damage and, and fight. Between husband and wife, pride can cause fighting. Do you know, actually know that the pr- a husband can be proud towards our, his wife? And the wife also can be proud towards the husband. That is why there is fighting in the house. When the pride grows, you think about it, think about it. How can this one think he can talk to me like this? Or the husband say, how can this woman regard me? I have, she is younger, than, she's just the age of my third junior sister. Behave, please, you must know that she's not your third junior sister. She's your wife. By being a wife, she's senior your, your third junior sister. They may not be the same age, but she has occupied a senior office by being your wife. That, that is what some people don't get correctly. When you say somebody, it is, it is arrogance that make you begin to talk like Because you have conceived it in your mind. Conceive it for so long, then you blow it out one day and it becomes a fight. It becomes a quarry. So we must deal with the author. When you see that you are thinking always like this, how hold is it to talk to me like that? Who is he to address me that way? How does it, and you know that you have what? You have transported the altar from the whole rings, altar of pride into what? Your new church. It must be released. Permanently for you to be free. Jesus, the Bible says, we must let the mind of Christ be in you. He came to the world like God and King, but he behaved like ordinary common man. You see, the Bible says he did not, he, did, he brought himself to be ridiculed. He endured that to the point of cross. He did not struggle to be praised or to be honored or to be seen. So that is why every of those who want to serve him and go to heaven must do what? They must remove the altar of pride from their heart. When you feel like that always, you know that you have this altar. I need to deal with it. The third one, the altar of idolatry. Say that to somebody. The altar of idolatry. Somebody will say, I don't, I don't go to shrine. I don't do idols. There are many idols today that are not shrine. Your television can be an idol. Your children can be idols. What you like to do most can be idols. If you are a young boy or girl, you, you like to do sports. Your sports may be idolatry if you don't prioritize that very well. If you don't make sure that you love God above the things you are doing. For instance, I, I used to tell my children, you want to play a football game, you wake up early in the morning. And now you have a, a Sunday service. Then they come and wake you. Then you have an idol, isn't it? You have an idol in your heart. If they wake you to come to church, then they don't wake you to go and play football or basketball or rocket, whatever you do. Then you have idol you're dealing with. So if you are like that, you must know that I need to get rid of this idol from my heart before it destroys me. Because idol has funny way of destroying where they sit for long. If you have this idol of prioritizing other things more than God, one day you will not even be born again anymore. Is that true of us? Because you will give full time to those things and you just get out away from the presence of God completely. Because that is the idol that has been lived. If you have a tree, if you see a tree that has been in a, spotted in a place for about 100 years, how do those trees look like? You see that they are big, extraordinarily. They look like beasts. They are very, they have taken ground and they look strange. You see, because they have been there for hundreds of years. The same way with these idols. If you allow idols to stay longer in you and you are not taking care of them, they will take care of you one day. And when they do the taking care of, they don't do it, they do it mercilessly to put the owner to shame and ridicule. 
Even to put sometimes the owner to a kind of sin that you will not be able to confess for life. And when you don't confess the sin for life, it's going to hell fire. Regardless of how you are served God. Because this is activity of these altars. They want to hold you to ransom. They want to keep you stagnant. They want to make you to go back to the world. They want to put you to shame the day you least expected. They want to keep you perpetually as a sinner. They don't want you to repent until you die. Those are the activity of these altars. You do things that you will not be able to speak out. You hide it. Because they are too big. They are scary to be, to be told. They are too big to tell anyone. These are the activity of those altars in the new church. You need to get rid of them. Your body, like I always say, is a church, the new church. Your salvation that you have in you is your new church. You must not allow altar from the old ruins to come into your new life. Church. We go to the uh, we read uh, Ezekiel chapter 14, 1 to 4. The idol. Ezekiel 14, 1 to 4. Now some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came to me saying. That is prophet Ezekiel saying. The, some of the elders, they came to me, yes. So, and the word of the Lord came to me saying. The word of the Lord came to me saying. Son of man. Son of man. These men have set up their idols in their hearts. These men have done what? They have set up the idols in their hearts. And put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. They have things in their heart that make them stumble into sin all the time. They set it up as idols. They love those things more than me. And because they love those things more than me, the things make them commit sin all the time. Yes? Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? Should I let should they come and ask to come? You know, they came to Ezekiel. They said, We want to inquire of the Lord. They had problem. So they came to the prophet. And the prophet is asking God, Lord, your people have problem. They want you to speak concerning it. And the Lord said, No. This is not the time to, to speak to them. They have idols in their heart. Except they remove the idols in their heart that are commit that make them always to commit sin. I will not be able to speak to them. Yes. Therefore, speak to them and say to them. Say to them. Thus says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God. Every one of the house of Israel. Everyone from the household of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart. Who set up idols in their heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity. And put before him what make them fall into sin. And then comes to the prophet. And they now come to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him who comes. I will answer anybody that come to me according to the not the multitude of his idols. According to the multitude of the idols in their heart. So you cannot have idol in your heart and you expect miracle. You expect healing. You expect prophecy. You expect to work for God. You expect to do miracles. You expect to go places for God. You have, Maybe you are the one wondering, God, the more I want to serve you, the more I see that you cannot, I cannot serve you. You have idol that is disturbing that to happen. You are the one that the more you want to keep holy, you cannot be holy. You have the idols that are making that happen. You are the one that you pray, you go for uh, prayer times and, and, uh, and uh, you, 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 you stay before the Lord, waiting on the Lord for three days, seven days, you can not hear anything. It is the hider from your heart that is letting that happen. Unless the hider is removed, the Lord said, I will not speak to you. I will not have anything to do with you. He said, I deal with everyone according to what? According to the hiders from your heart. If you want to see me wholeheartedly, then deal with all your heart, all your idols completely. If you want to see me halfway, yeah, you, you have a halfway idol. You have maybe your, your own idol that you have is 50%. So I deal with you 50%. Your idol is 60%. I deal with you 60%. You want to have me completely as God in you, then you give me all of your heart. Remove every idol to zero. Then you will see me wholeheartedly. So this is a secret for someone today. You want to serve God to the fullest. You want to have and experience His power and anointing. You want Him to speak to you constantly. You want to be with Him and be a mouthpiece of God. You must begin to deal with the idols that want to deal with you. The idols from your heart. Things you love more than God. Things you cherish more than Bible study and Sunday service. The things you can say, see God, wait today, I need to go and sort this. They become the idols. Things you love most that take the position of your heart. But you see God not moving in your heart. You don't have thoughts of God, but you have thoughts of other things. Thinking about money in the bank. Calculating how to make money or to sell shares. And trade trades and go to work and look for other jobs. 
but God is not in the position of your heart. That is an idol. They need to go for you to see God. They need to go for you to become what? The, the real heritage of God that the devil cannot mess with. That the charms and ammunition of people cannot reach. The Bible says, He is the Lord that does what? That created the blacksmith. That blow is coal to the instrument to make what? To make instrument of war. I am also the maker of, of what? Of the, of, the, of the destroyer to destroy. So therefore, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. So this is the heritage of the children of God. Your heritage. Until you remove every idol, you cannot have any heritage or inheritance from God. Except when God is going by mercy once in a while. Just like the situation of the Bethesda, when the angel will come down once in a while to steer the water. If you want to see God once in a while, it's okay to live anyhow you want. But if you want to see God every day, you want to be touched every day, you want to be protected and defended every day, you want God to fight your battle in the dreams, you must look for the idols in you and destroy them out. Prayerfully. In Jesus' name. Amen. Number three. Number four. Number four, the altar of lies. Say that to somebody. The altar of lies. The altar of lie and deception. 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 In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verses uh, 5, chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Yes. But a certain man named Ananias. A certain man named Ananias. With Sapphira, his wife. With Sapphira, his wife. Sold the possession. They sold their possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it. They divided it and they kept some part away and they brought some part to Peter. And brought a certain And the wife also aware of it. Yes. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Yes. But Peter said. Peter said. Ananias. Ananias. Why has Satan. Listen to this. Ananias. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Why has Satan filled up your heart with lies? Why has Satan filled up your heart with lies? To lie to what? The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. And keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. Is that three? Yes. Three. Thank you. You see that? The lie is always what? It's always conceived too. You conceive lie because lie is uh, something that... I, what English can I use for it? It's a... Pre, you know why you pre? They call it the preconceived notion. Not preconceived. There's another language. Pre something. I forgot. It escaped my mind. You know when you when you prepare something before time, lies are not something that come by accident. Premed. Thank you. My lie is a premeditated action. Every lie is premeditated. You conceive it before you say, isn't it? Yeah. You don't just lie by accident and say, hey, it by accident. Maybe you, you are just doing like this. What do I say here? That matter. To get out. It's like, okay, I will just say like this and say like this. Isn't it? Yeah. Because it's becoming embarrassing. It's becoming problematic. I need to get out of this. Then you premeditate and you do what? And you release. So the heart, Ananias and Sabira and with his wife, they already plan, isn't it? Yeah. They plot. They say, when we get there, you know, we're on the same page. Let us be on the same page, you know? You understand? When you say this, you go to this. When I say B, you say B. You say, okay, I get it. Then two of them conceive in their heart lie. So when you are someone, listen to me very well, you have lies in your heart. You have alternative. When you are in trouble, you say, I can say this when this happened. Yes, this is what I will say. Then you have that altar of lie. They need to be uprooted. Otherwise, they put you into damage permanently or they put you to shame one day. I'm ridiculous. So you must deal with, when you are a Christian, you see this happening to you. You conceive lie. You conceive lie. Even sometimes it doesn't happen, you don't need it, but you release it. You already conceive it in case I need it. And sometimes you don't need it. And sometimes you need it, you say it. You have to deal with this before it deals with you. You have to do what? Deal with, deal with altar of lie. This is the whole altar that wants to destroy the new church. A lie is the whole altar that wants to destroy the new church. Let's go to the next one quickly. The altar of hatred. Altar of what? Hatred. Hatred. Hatred is a feeling of dislike. 
is to feel that you dislike someone or something for reason for or for we just or we we just uh, without just cause. It can be for a reason, it can be for no reason, but you just hate someone or hate something according to the feeling of your heart. So the hatred is conception from the heart. Nobody, you cannot know someone that hates you or not, except they display it. But they conceive it first in the heart before they they display the hatred. Let us see Bible passage, uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Uh, sorry, I said Roman. Proverbs 10, 12 and Proverbs 10, 18. The same chapter 10, verse 12 and verse 18. Yes? Proverbs 10, verse 12. Yes. Hatred stirs up strife. Hatred is conceived first in the heart and they bring up, you exhibit it by what? By fight. But love covers all sins. And the love also, if you have love in you instead of hatred, then you begin to cover up the sins of your brother. You will not even know when they, when they offend you. But somebody you hate, even if they sing, if they sing, they say, you see, he's singing about me. He's singing about me. Even if they smile, they say, you, you see, he's laughing at me. Because of what? Because there is hatred. Because we have something that we are dragging. But someone you love, if they sing, you sing the song with them. Even if it's a song of insult, you will sing it with them and clap. Because you know he's not talking about me. It could be someone else. So, yes, 18. 10, 18. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. You see that? He said, whoever hides, anyone that hides hatred has what? Lying, lying lips. lips. Anyone that hides hatred, and everybody hides hatred, isn't it? Hatred, because hatred is inside your heart. Therefore, the Bible says, whoever has hatred also have another sin, which is lying. And whoever spreads slander is a fool. Whoever spreads slander is a fool. Amen. Amen. Then let's let's move to the next one quickly. After hatred, greed also is conceived. Greed also is one of the altar that want to destroy the new church. One of the altar that want to old altar that want to destroy the new church. Greed, greed. Second Peter chapter two fourteen to eighteen. Second Peter two fourteen to eighteen. Greed. One of the old altar in the new church. Greed, yes? 2 Peter 2, 14 to 18. Mm -hmm. Having eyes full of adultery. He said, having eyes. How can eyes full of adultery? Which means it is the heart he's talking about. We have spoken about adultery before, but we are going to greed and covetousness now. Yes? And that cannot cease from sin. Uh huh. Enticing unstable souls. Uh huh. They have a heart trained in covetous practices. Uh huh. And are accursed children. They have a heart what? Trained. Trained in covetous practices. In greed. Their heart. Their heart. Their heart. Greed and covetous is full up in their heart. Yes? And are accursed children. They are accursed children. They are forsaking the right way and gone astray. They are forsaking the right way of God and gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Baal. Be- they follow the way of Balaam, the son of Baal. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. But he was rebuked for his snake iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrains the madness it's of okay. the prophets. It's okay. Now, what is he saying there? What is he saying? We are reading from the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, 14 to 18. 2 Peter 2, 14 to 18. He said, their, when their heart is full of covetousness and greed, what happened? How do they display that? They will be looking for money without caring what can happen. They will be looking for money with, without, you know, with the, at the cost of anything. Because they have had their heart full of covetousness and greed. And their action will be towards what? Making that money at all costs. They don't care how, what it takes. If you take their mother, so be it. If they tell them go and bring the pint of your mother, they will bring it. If they tell them go and cut the air, the air of the head of your father, they will cut it. Because their heart is full of what? Greed and covetousness. If some people, if they tell them, bring one of your children to do the sacrifice, they will bring. Bring somebody you love most, they will bring their wife, anybody they love most. Because what? They have their heart full of it. And their ear is what is what is becoming difficult, what is becoming dangerous. When someone called a minister of God or a child of God or a follower of Christ, when they are having this idol, this I mean this altar, the altar of greed and covetousness inside of them, left for long, they may even want to increase their ministry, membership, or power for, uh, and they will use anybody to do it because that has been staying in their heart for long. 
They will just say, now I need to make money. I've been suffering for long. Because they have left the altar of greed and conviction for long. And when it's fully grown and established, then they will not begin to see the things they need to have that they are not having. My church, I need to have a mega church. I need to have money. I need to be have main fame. Because that altar of greed and conviction is now speaking out. Because it's been left for long. Then they will not begin to make some move when they begin to use human beings to achieve their purpose. When they begin to use things, sacrifices, ministers of God, bro- um, brethren in the church, carrying sacrifices in the night. Even brethren, desperate because they want promotion at work, they will now become people that are carrying sacrifices in the night. Go to church in the day, carry sacrifice in the night. Bathing with charm medicine. Incantation in the midnight. Carrying food to the junctions, cross junctions. Because the greed and conventionless idol, I mean altar, that they refuse to deal with has begun to deal with them. In the new church, things that they forsook many years ago, they see them begin to do it again. Because they didn't deal with them. They saw them little by little. They did not cut them. And this altar will gain ground to become very strong. And they will not be rooted in such a way that you will find it difficult to pull out. Number seven. The altar of the love of the world. Say that to somebody. The altar of the love of the world. The altar of the love of the world. Some people brought it to the new church. The altar of the love of the world. They brought them into the new church. And the altar began to grow and grow and grow and grow. Some Christians are strong enough to, to, to make it live longer than necessary. You know, some are strong. It, it doesn't come out after one year or two years of salvation. But later on, they begin to spring up. 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Mm-hmm. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Love not the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, anyone that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and the pride of life is not of the Father. They are not of the Father. But is of the world. But of the world. And the world is passing away. The world will pour away. And the lust of it. And the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. But those who continue to nurse and keep the altar of worldliness in the new temple, the new church, they will be destroyed by this worldliness one day. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, it's not in my note but it drops to my mind as I was speaking. Genesis chapter, I believe God wants me to say that. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, what does it say? Genesis 3 6. Yes. So when the woman saw, aha, uh-huh. yes, it said when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that the tree tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise. Look at that. He saw. She saw. Go back again. She saw that the, the tree was good for the food. The woman saw that it was good for food. That it was pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. And it was desirable to make one wise. And what happened? She took of its fruit. She took from the fruit. And ate. And ate. See that? Now, that altar has been dwelling in Eve for, for, for many times. We don't know for how long. We don't know for how long. See, you know, don't forget that it was Adam that was created first. It was Adam that was told about the danger of eating from that fruit, isn't it? Now, when Eve was created, was formed from Adam, then Adam must have told Eve, see, everything here has a law. This tree, we cannot eat. Every other thing we can eat. Now, from that time she knew about it, she has been, the altar was growing. The altar was what? Growing. Growing. She will pass by it every day, say, this tree, hmm. this tree, hmm. this fruit, uh-huh. this fruit. Uh-huh. She, she did not remove it from her mind. She failed to deal with the anxiety or passion to inquire into the into the what? Into the fruit that was that God. Only one tree in the whole garden. This woman thought about it every day and night. 
Only one tree in the whole garden. The woman thought about it every day and night. Until she walked to the tree and stood like this. And she stood there. What is it about this tree that we cannot eat? And she looked. The Bible says she looked. She looked. She looked. And what the first thing she saw? She saw three things. Number one. She saw that the fruit was good for food. This is good for food. Yes. Number two. That it was pleasant to the eyes. It's pleasant to look. It's beautiful. Yes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. Then if I eat this, I can be wise. Because the devil said if I eat it, I will be wise. The devil spoke to her mind that she will be wise after eating it. Then she grabbed it and she ate. She didn't just eat. She went to convince her husband too. And both of them ate. And sin came. You see? So these are the same thing that is still pursuing the whole world up to now. You and I. Those three things. Go back to that second, first John chapter 2. You will see it again. Don't forget Eve saw. That's the first one. She saw. Then she did what? She saw that it was good to me. It was wise. good for food. Pleasant to, to, to behold. Then third one is able to make her wise. wise. Then she went for it. Those three things. That Those are the things we consider in our days too. When you see anybody that wants to sin, they look at the woman. Oh. Pleasant to the eyes. Behold, an angel created with special day by God. And some of them, even of the other, he said, Sister, do you know God created you in a very special day? Has anybody told you that you are beautiful? If nobody has said that, I said that the first time. Let me be the first person to say you are, you are a beautiful woman. And yet, you could be a married man and saying that too. When the married man begins to admire girls all the time, they need to, you need to be what? They need to be careful. If you need somebody to admire, go and admire your wife in the house. Don't tell young lady that is not your wife to say, oh, Sister, you are beautiful. Has anybody told you you are a beautiful lady? The, the, you are a good thing. The Lord has made you good. That is not your function as a married man. You have found your own go and make your own wife at home beautiful too. And enjoy the beauty of your own. Don't be looking at every other beauty. Once the mar- you see, uh, 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 marriage is a market. Once you pick one, you pick one from the market, you keep that one forever. You forget about the rest. You crucify your eyes against the rest. Then you enjoy the one you have. But before you take one, you open your eyes very well, pray very well, then you make your choice. Once your choice is made, it's, cho- it's chosen for, uh, for life. Every other thing is a sin. You live with somebody for a few years, say, uh, 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 this one is not good for me anymore. I don't like the beauty anymore. You want to choose that? That is a sin. So it's, this, these are the altar disturbing everybody. They don't recognize whether you are a Christian or not. They don't know whether you are born again or not. They don't know whether you are a pastor or not. They don't know whether you are a bishop or not. They don't know whether you are an evangelist or not. Once you allow them to stay, the worldliness, altar of worldliness in you, beginning to admire things that you see. You go, you are a pastor, you go past the house. You, it's not a sin to say, ah, this house is beautiful. But when you begin to carry it on the other line, you pass there every day and say, oh, this, and you don't have money to do it. Then you begin to see yourself becoming what? Desperate to make the same thing happen. To, make, to see what? You are now becoming obsessed with having that thing because you allow your mind to dwell too much around it. So the best thing to do is that you are, whatever you see that is good, you admire it and you let it go. But when you begin to develop the lust of the eyes, yes, continue reading. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. Is not of the Father. They are not of the Father. But is of the world. But they are of the world. They are not of the Father, but they are of the world. I will stop here for now because I want us to pray. I will have to conclude it next week. The temple... The old temple in the new church. The old temple. We have prayer points there. We'll pray today. We'll pray it. Sorry, hold altar in the new church. We'll pray today and we'll pray when we conclude again next week properly. But let's do this uh, prayer today while we do the rest next week properly. A- Amen. Amen. You will stand on your feet wherever you are. See, this is a strong, this is a serious battle. These are the things that they don't have mercy on you as individual. They are the authors that have no mercy 
on any new church. Say to say, say somebody beside you. These altars have no mercy on the new church. These altars have no mercy on the new church. So I have no mercy on the altars. So I will have no mercy on the altars. Look at the three things I wrote here. Number one, I say, what you do not defeat will defeat you. Say to somebody. My brother, be careful. Whatever you refuse to defeat will one day defeat you. Whatever you refuse to defeat will one day defeat you. Number two, what you fail to destroy will find a way to destroy you. What you fail to destroy will find a way to destroy you. Anything dangerous that you refuse to destroy will find a way to destroy you. Anything dangerous that you refuse to destroy will find a way to destroy you. Number three, what you do not deal with will deal with you one day. What you do not deal with will deal with you one day. It's just like somebody you saw a snake. God forbid, by your in your in your in your garden in the garden of your house. Then you saw it the second day. You saw it the third day. Then you don't do anything about it. You just say, Oh, it just came to her receive sunshine. But if you leave it for longer, the sunshine will now become a time where she is looking for also breakfast. And it will now begin to cause damage around the house. So whatever danger you see around your house around your life, around your home or marriage, even from your heart that you see as danger, you deal with them quickly before they deal with you. You destroy them quickly before they destroy you. You defeat them quickly before they grow to defeat you. The reason why we are always overcome by seeing individuals as people, as Christians, is because we take things easy. You see something happen, you see your children behaving some strange way. You say, oh, okay, come around, it's okay. Some, especially those of you that live in America and Europe, you behave like white people. Say the child is doing something that is bad. He say, oh, it's okay, it's just a child. Oh, come around. By the time the child now grow, it will not be something that is not okay anymore. Because somebody said, because he has finally come around. Then when they come around, you don't find it funny anymore. So therefore, when you see strange character in your children that is not pleasing unto God and to you, don't joke with it. Deal with it in prayers, in fasting, until you see something happen. Because when the fool they grow, oh, they'll be asking, in my language, in my language, the old people used to make a, a proverb. They say, when you, there is a tree called a roko tree. When they, are too, when they are very small, he said, when you see a, a roko tree coming behind your house, Quickly cut it down. Because when you don't cut it and the full grow, they will ask for women's sacrifice. And they become a dwelling place for evil spirits. So don't joke with things around you. When you feel, you always have a feeling to sin. Don't joke with it. When you are married, you have desire for somebody else. Don't joke with it. When you are a young lady, you see that you are always lustful and trouble with lust. Don't joke with it. When you have your life, you are having nightmares. Don't joke with it. You have night, uh, uh, white dreams. People having a meeting with you in the dream. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with anything that is not normal. You constantly eat in your dream and you say, that's a good soup yesterday was good. I needed to bring a sorrow today. Don't joke with it. They are not good things. You have your food in your kitchen in the physical. Don't eat in the spiritual. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with nonsense that can make you go to hell and, not, and make you unfulfilled here on earth. They can trouble your world. They can trouble your life. They can make your life without peace and send you to hell. Don't joke with them. They are the altar from the old rings, your old life. They want to destroy and trouble the new church. Stand up on your feet today and pray this first prayer. With anger, with holy anger. I'm not saying push somebody, make it holy. Amen. Amen. So every old temple or every old altar. Every old temple or every old altar. Every old altar. Every old altar. Of sin. Of sin. And unrighteousness. And unrighteousness. In my new life. In my new life. Jump out by fire. Jump out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every old sin and unrighteousness in my new life but the power in the blood of Jesus jump out and die in the name of Jesus every old altar of sin every old altar of 
of unrighteousness and filthiness. From my whole ruins that I want to destroy my current Christian life. Father, destroy them. Father, destroy them. Father, destroy them. By fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every old image. Every old image. Hiding under my new life. Hiding under my new life. Let's take it this way. Every old image. Every old image. Hiding under my new garment. Hiding under my new garment. Be rooted up by fire. Rooted up by fire. In the name. Jesus, every old image hiding under my new garment be rooted out by fire in the name of Jesus. Be rooted by fire, be rooted by fire, be rooted by fire. Every old image living inside my new garment be rooted out, be rooted out, be rooted out in Jesus. Mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Every known and unknown covenant. Every known and unknown covenant. Between me and an old altar. Between me and an old altar. Any known and unknown covenant. Every known and unknown covenant. Between me and any old temple altar. Between me and any old altar. Be broken to pieces today by fire. Broken to pieces today. Begin to break them. Break them. Break them. Every known and unknown covenant between me and only old altar be broken to pieces. Right now, be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Raama koze kebo boro boli mahalika. Ye ema akanzai ma kote moro boli mahalika. Raama koze kebo boro boli mahalika. Every known and unknown covenant between me and any old altar. Be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. In Jesus' name we pray. I am the temple of the living God. The dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Say that again. I am the temple of the living God. The dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Any other spirits or forces living inside of me, you are living without my conscience. Therefore, come on! I am the temple of the living God, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Every spirit of force is living inside of me. You are living without my consent, and I command in the name of Jesus. Come on! By fire, be destroyed in hell. Jump out by fire, be destroyed in hell. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Ya ama kote mo boro boli mahali kantara ma. Ya ima kanzai ma kote mo boro boli mahali ka. Ye kanzai ma kanzai mahali ko. Wahama kose ke mo boro boli ma. Come out, come out. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every old and ancient man. Every old and ancient man. That may be refusing to let me go today. To serve the living God. To serve the living God. With joy. With joy. I repeat it again. Every old and ancient man. Every old and ancient man. That may be refusing to let me go. To serve my God with joy. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost come fire. down and destroy them today. Destroy Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Every old and ancient man that may be refusing to let me go to serve my God with joy today. Holy Ghost fire. Descend and consume them today. Destroy them out of me. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every old and ancient man that they refuse me to go to set my God with joy. I command the power of Holy Ghost to descend by fire and consume you today. 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 In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. By the raising of anointing. 
Every yoke must be broken. Every rope must be broken by the rising of anointing. Every yoke, shake it loud. Every must be broken by the rising of anointing. Every yoke, your hand. What? Every yoke must be broken. Every yoke, every yoke must be broken. Every yo must be broken by the rhythm of anointing. Every yo, every yo must be broken by the rhythm of anointing. Every yo, every yo, every yo must be broken by the rhythm of anointing. Every yo, uh huh. Every yo must be broken by the rhythm of anointing. Ah ha ha. Every yo must be broken by the rhythm of anointing. Ah, every yo must be broken. Our time is gone. Let us. Uh, do the remaining, remaining two and close for the day. Every old garment, every every old garment, garment upon my body, physical or spiritual, upon my body, body physical or spiritual, that is attracting, that is attract, attracting sin and shame. That is attracting sin and shame. Let me take it again. Every old garment in, upon my life. Every old garment upon my life. Physical or spiritual? Physical or spiritual. That is attracting shame. Attracting ridicule. Attracting disgrace. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Every old garment upon my physical and spiritual life. That is attracting shame. Attracting disgrace. Attracting ridicule. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Every sin of immorality. Every sin of immorality. In the inner chambers of my heart. In the inner chambers of my heart. Be removed today by fire. Oh, yeah, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Every sin and immorality. In the inner chamber of my heart, better move, better move, better move, better move, better move in the name of